ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this horizontal table discussion. I don't want to confuse people. If I start by saying round table, they'll be looking for the table. I think this session shall focus on the opportunities and highlight developmental and progress in local content development in Africa, oil and gas producing countries, especially in the light of the global energy transition away from fossil fuels. How prepared is Africa, gentlemen? Unfortunately, no ladies on this panel, and I'm not happy about it. How prepared is Africa to produce, process, and market the over 120 billion barrels of produce, proven oil reserves? and over 500 trillion cubic feet of proven gas without Western technology, with, without Western finance, without Western expertise, without Western markets. The question is, what is Apple doing to pull together the resources of African producers to enable them overcome the imminent challenge. And I think it's important to underscore that word imminent. It is not coming in another 10, 20 years, it is imminent. How do we overcome these imminent challenges posed by the departure of our traditional partners that we know in those days, we used to call them seven sisters. Today, I think they've reduced themselves to six. Those are the traditional partners that we know. How do we exist without them? Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Africa continent today has got 1.3 billion people in the current estimation. And yesterday, I was told that about 600 million Africans don't have access to electricity. Hence, it is called the dark continent. I was also told statistically that about 800 million Africans don't have access to cooking gas. And then today, the discussion is about energy transition. I recall in those days, I am just trying to set the context and then allow my panelists to tell me how their various countries have been dealing with in this issue. In those days, Nigeria, as an example, had abundance of coal in our country. And the energy transition discussion started. One mistake we make anytime people ask me questions is like energy transition is a new phenomenon. It is not a new phenomenon. Mankind has been transiting in terms of energy from the time mankind realized that it dominated the universe. If you recall, in those days, the early men, when they started and they needed energy, they started burning firewood. They were using wood for energy source in Europe, in America. Hence today, when you go to Europe, they have cut out down all their trees. And in the process of using coal, I mean, the firewood, they discovered coal. And then they transited from firewood to coal. And they told the whole world that the cleanest fuel then was coal and convinced everybody to move from firewood to coal. Nigeria as a country also discovered coal then. We all started heading towards coal. And then in the process, when Nigeria and Africa wanted to get used to the utilization of coal, they say, ah, it is the dirtiest fuel, now it is hydrocarbon. <laughs> and we all started transiting to hydrocarbon. Nigeria had abundance of coal. We abandoned it and we drifted 
towards hydrocarbon. I am sure other African countries perhaps did the same. Now we are getting used to how to develop these natural resources ourselves. They say, ah, it is the dirtiest fuel on earth. Now let's go to renewables. As I speak, almost 60% of the energy that is required in China is produced through coal. Meanwhile, African countries have abandoned the utilization of coal. Almost 50% of the energy source in Australia is produced through coal. Meanwhile, they told us coal is the dirtiest fuel on earth, but they are still using it to get their energy. When they discovered oil in the North Sea, the British said hydrocarbon was the best thing and we all drifted towards hydrocarbon. Now the North Sea reserves have depleted. They are seeing nothing again. They say, sorry, it's no longer hydrocarbon. It is now renewables and green energy. That has been the discussion. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today the war in Europe is brought to another dimension. Initially, they say, don't stop, don't stop producing gas, stop producing oil. But with the war in Europe, they now say, can we have more gas? Can we have more oil? In other words, for us, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our energy source is an existential imperative for us in Africa. And hence the question, distinguished panelists, what are we in our individual countries trying to do to ensure that we enhance local content, enhance local participation, because very soon they will take away the funding. Very soon they will take away the technology. Very soon they will refuse to buy our product. Meanwhile, we have the population to consume what we produce. So hence the question, distinguished panelists, I will be now turning to you, having set the context, and then ask you to each perhaps take five minutes or three minutes to tell us how you see this challenge and what you are doing about this challenge. I am not biased, but let me start from Mr. Oyewone. Can I hear from you? Not because it's a Nigerian, but because it's at that end. 